30-ish-ish. -ish. Michael, Michael, no, no laughing, sir. I appreciate no laughing when I say things that are fairly true. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you have a fantastic head of hair. It is the Italian. Uh, there's no doubt. You don't look a day over 35. I'll take it. We'll stop at 35. Done. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> you know, I'm right here. I'm right here. I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> and I'll take it. You're saying the right things. There's no doubt. So we're the early birds here. Um, I guess it opened at uh, 3 E for the early VIPs. And I see a lot of VIP things. Uh, and at 4 o'clock, everybody else gets to come in, and then uh, and then we'll start this thing at 4.15, because right now this doesn't count. Aww. None of this counts. If I don't know, I would have slept a little bit longer. I just took a nap. It was really nice. <coughs> that's, why, that's why the coffee. I can't, it's so hard to adjust from the West Coast to the East Coast, even though I've been on the East Coast for over a week now, I still want to sleep till 11. Of course, when I'm in California, I'd like to sleep till 11, <laughs> if I can. I don't. I know. I have to get up at five, and that's just terrible. All right, you got the coffee. How bad was that drink this morning? The drink this morning on the news <clears throat> was not my favorite. I, was just look bad. <laughs> uh, I would have much rather just had a, just pour some scotch in there with that ice cube, and I'm good. Isn't that what they call acting? Yeah, it was. It was yes, I tried to act. Oh, Clearly, I didn't convince everyone. Uh, it was rather light and sort of refreshing, but there was just too much taste going on there for me. I. Uh, it was a little much at 8 o'clock in the morning, or at 9 o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. You made it. All the way from Oz. Oh, all right. Hi. What is your name? Ann. Hi, Ann. Welcome. Thank you. When did you get in? Just now. Just now? Straight from Australia. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. We'll give you a hand right there. Absolutely. Wow. Nothing like jumping right into it, huh? You want some coffee or are you okay? I'm okay. All right, yes, ma'am. That's okay, I'm gonna stand. What do they call coffee with milk in Australia? Is it high white? Is or is that in England? England. England. Is that a high? What do you call it? Flat white. Flat white coffee. Is that what? You, you call it white coffee? Flat white. White coffee. Yeah, coffee. Well, that's what I would say. Well, that's a flat white. All right, good. I'll get a flat white. But apparently that's not right, so or it's changed in the last couple of years. And where in the UK would you be from? Yorkshire. Where's that? On the East Coast. There we go. Now I'm getting there. Halfway up the country on the East Coast. I haven't been on the, You're closer to Manchester than London. But. Mm -hmm. I had never gone that side. I will now. That's true. It's kind of a. It's rather a hub, though. You know that, right? I've been to Newcastle. Not people. Not many people go up to Newcastle. That's where I met Nuki Brown, which is a Newcastle Brown ale. It's, it was. It was a nice introduction. And someone's an Irish beer friend. All right. Hey, dude, we got some water. Uh, no, I've got my coffee. Water's for sissies. Uh, no, I'm kidding. And LeBron James, who needed lecture water last night. Now, okay, look. Anybody's going to get pick on LeBron James, I'm going to tell you right now. You out there, you're playing. He is an amazing athlete, incredible endurance. And this is a big old body. And he burns off the water. So I felt for him because it's really frustrating not being able to move. I've, came, I've cramped up in a game before. It was in the cold because you don't realize how much you lose... You don't you lose water in the cold, even when you're not sweating. It it freezes at you. But I was rooting for San Antonio, so I wasn't that upset. Who's, who's bigger than Duncan, though? Tim Duncan is a beast, and that was amazing. And he almost had heat stroke anyway. All those guys were, were dying. It was really a, a tough fought game, and obviously, um, with losing the air conditioning, what happened in the middle of the game last? I was the first round of the NBA Finals, and Miami was playing San Antonio, and apparently the the air conditioning in San Antonio just went out. So <laughs> it was hot. It was like Popovich 90 something. Yeah, Popovich. <laughs> he, Coach Pop, I wouldn't put it past him. He's pretty amazing. So uh, I'm going to incorporate that into the third season to hit the floor if we get, up, if we get there. You better because, you know, the shirt's better. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. I got a hat for you, too, Janine. I'll give you my hat. Aww. 
Rock. Super Bowl? Wow. Oof, if I could pick that one right now, I'd, I'd put some money on it. Uh, I'd love to say the Bills, but I can't in any good conscience. But you know what the odds I'd get, though, would be amazing. You should just do it. How about I'll, I'll throw some money in. Yeah, I'd love to see the Cowboys do it. I got a personal vested interest in both the Cowboys or the Bills doing it. Yeah, we can bet here, right? Yeah. Can I bet here? Yeah, casinos, right? All right. <laughs> Not that I'm a betting guy, but I am a betting guy. So if I can throw some casino, wow. Well, I wonder what the odds are. Oh, I'm going over there. <laughs> Hold on, I'll be right back. You got that. Wait. Yeah, you got that. Uh, I would. <laughs> Criminal Minds. Was it Criminal Minds? Yes, yeah, Criminal Minds. Yes, I was addicted to. I was addicted to winning. If it had to kill somebody to better my luck. I wonder if that works in real life. Let's give that a shot here today. Uh, no, that was a fun character to play. It's really fun to go and play uh, different characters on different shows. I enjoy that. It's always interesting because it's not your show. And when it's your show, if it's my show, I try to welcome everybody who comes on. I thank you for coming on. I learned that back when I first did uh, Beverly Hills 90210. 400 years ago, <laughs> um, and I learned that um, because it was the biggest show on te television at the time, and it was uh, Luke Perry and Jason Priestley, and each one of them warmly welcomed me and thanked me for being on the show. And I was like, I'm just so happy to be here, but I realized that's how you make an actor comfortable. You welcome them into, the, into your house, so to speak, and I have taken great pains to do that ever since, and that was a, a wonderful lesson to learn. So now when I go on other people's shows, I see which people do that and which ones don't. I won't tell you which ones do it, which ones don't. But, uh, but you know, when you come on the show, when you guest on a show, especially on a, a procedural police show, chances are you're going to be the bad guy. And so you don't really interact with the, the good guys until, uh, until the end when they catch you. Because invariably they catch you. Unless you're in Law & Order SVU and you get away with it. That was me. I got away with it. Thank you. Very bad guy. Um, but those, both those shows were a lot of fun to do uh, for a short time. It would have been a great gig to have as one of the regular detectives, though. That'd be fantastic because um, those guys come in, clean up in two days, and it's all over. It's like, wow, I like that job. I sort of have that, those kind of hours on the, the current show that I do, Hit the Floor. It's an ensemble, and I love that, so I don't have to work um, 12 hours a day, five days a week, which is nice because I'm raising a, a son and uh, a single dad. We did a pictorial that's going to come out in People Magazine next week, so it'll be fun. Nice. Uh, so check it out. Right, right before Father's Day. Aww. And his birthday is next week. We're just going to make it rain in the Kane family next week. It's going to be exciting. Uh, but he's going to, he just finished eighth grade, my son, and he's uh, heading to high school next year. So, so it's all over. Look out. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be tough. Pardon me? Is my son single? He dang well better be. <laughs> Uh, yes, he is definitely single, unless there's a secret that he wants to tell me when I get home, and uh, we'll have a long talk. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a pretty sweet 14-year-old. Everybody talks about how the kids are so much more advanced today than uh, they were back in my generation, or some of yours, the generation behind me, shame on you. Uh, but I don't think so. I think it's all parenting. I mean, I think they're, they can certainly get... Um, a lot more influences, they get a lot more information from uh, from the internet. Uh, it's pretty amazing. But uh, my son is doing a lot less wrong than I did. Maybe it's because I'm a very present father. Not to say my parents weren't, but I was child number two, and we lived in an area where it was all kids running around. I mean, for us, it was we were out playing until dark, and then you'd get you know come, you'd hear them screaming, "Get in here!" You take a little longer, then you show up and eat your food, go to bed. Uh, it's a different time now. Like I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't let my son be out like that. Not without a GPS tracking device, which you actually have in a phone. And I have it. I can tell you where he is right now. <laughs> actually, I know where he is right now. So, so it's okay. I like the Superman suit. All right. Well done, young lady. In case you guys were looking for a guy. Definitely. So are we close to starting? Is it time? Not yet. Still early. This has not begun yet for three more minutes. Uh -uh. <laughs> I like it. I like it here in Niagara. I, maybe it's because of the falls. Maybe it's because I'm not a giant fan of big cities. I spend so much time in cities, but I like to be outside of the city. You know, a good 20, 30, 40 minutes out. That's a little more space to breathe. 
and I was just in New York City again, uh, and it's just so strange for me to look out and just see buildings. I, I, I could never do that. I don't understand how people live that way. Maybe it's because I grew up in a coastal little town in California, but oof, not what I would like. Traffic's tremendous. In fact, there was a new report that just came out that said LA has the worst traffic in, in the United States. I will second that. I will, I'm going to concur. It's pretty bad. Look at you getting massages, everything. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. She earned it. You married her, okay? I. <laughs> Saves you the work, though, I'll be honest. I mean, it's... <laughs> Was it uh, anybody have any difficulty getting here? Any good stories? Other than, I mean, from down under, from down under. Yeah, you, no problems? Strip search and customs, perhaps? <laughs> Not that lucky, okay. All right. Just curious. You look a little guilty to me. So I would certainly put you in that, in that line. Check this woman thoroughly. She looks dangerous. Nothing she's doing, it's just behind the eyes I can see the danger. <laughs> and you definitely would be in search. <laughs> For a whole other set of reasons. So. <laughs> see how I just let that go right there? Just put it out there. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're one more minute and we're going to officially begin. So get nervous. Tense up, people. This is going to happen. Yes, sir. My wife wanted a close-up. A close-up picture? Yeah. Absolutely. Where is she? She says she, you're cuter than me. I don't understand. She's absolutely wrong. Where is she? Well, let's get it really close. Let's, like, get really close. Seriously, super. Like, bring it this way. Like... How's it look? Is it an eyeball? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. She said close up. String. Andy? Annie. Annie, I'm sorry. Well, she she came from far enough away, I would say absolutely, Annie. Okay, Come well, on. I'll up. take it. I'll take the picture, Annie. Will you? I will. I'll walk to you. I'll shorten the I'll shorten the oh. How are you, Annie? Very nice to meet you. My pleasure. Well, let's see. Oh, she has? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Smile. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Was it worth the trip? No. No. Worth no. no. <laughs> An awful long way to go. Where are you, where are you from in Australia? Melbourne. Melbourne. I've been there. I quite like it there. You do? Yeah. I went and surfed Bell's Beach. Ah. Did you longboard? I did not longboard. I do now because I'm old. But uh, <laughs> back then I was on a smaller short board. And uh, it scared the dickens out of me. It was, uh, it was a normal day. It was pretty decent size. And then uh, started getting bigger and started getting bigger. And uh, yeah, I was a little, I was a little tense. Um, there was a great... I might as well tell you a great Melbourne, Melbourne surfing story. It was right when Lois and Clark had come out. It was doing very well in, in Australia. And I came down to a show called The Logies. They're in Sydney, yeah. but I was in Melbourne first. And um, The Logies are like the Emmys in, in the States. And uh, <clears throat> the show had been doing very well, but I was down there and I had some friends who were surfers. And we went down surfing at Bells. And I was paddling out as the waves were getting bigger and bigger. And I was sort of scratching to get over this big wave as this kid is taking off on the wave, and he looks over at me, and he realizes that I was the kid who played Superman, and he, and he took off on the wave, and he goes, hey! <laughs> and he went right over the falls, and uh, I felt a little guilty, and I was like, ah, okay. And I kept kept going. I think that kid survived, but it was uh, it was questionable. It was touch and go for a minute there. That was my uh, Australia story. That's all I have. Okay, that's not the only story I have. But it's the only one I'll tell. <laughs> one the one I'll fess up to. I loved Australia. The fact the northern beaches of Sydney was a place that I thought, you know, if I didn't live where I lived and wasn't going to live in Malibu, California, which is where I do live, uh, that that would be a wonderful place 
to live. It's very similar to Malibu when I was growing up there uh, 500 years ago. So. <laughs> it was very nice. And is it still pretty much the same, or has it changed a lot? It gets a little bit nicer. Now, that doesn't sound totally like an Australian accent. Definitely not. No. <laughs> Where is the origins of that accent? Well, my mother was Italian, my father Armenian. I was born in Egypt. I went to French school. Wow. What am I? Australian. <laughs> that would make you Australian. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Holy smokes. All right, are we officially on? You bet. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome. To the Niagara Comic Con. Uh, I'm Dean Kane, I'll be your host today. Um, and I'm here happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Except for you. No, that's not. Yes, absolutely. Okay, two questions. What was your favorite villain in Lois and Clark? And two, what were your inspirations for the two episodes that you wrote for Lois and Clark? Ah, ah well, I'd say that my favorite villain, it's, it's a toss up. I mean, I'd have to give it to John Shea as Lex Luthor because. He's a great actor. Hey, John. If I said the wrong thing, you don't even want to know what was going to happen. So the lights came on. So uh, John was my favorite. He was a great adversary. Uh, just a fantastic guy. Great actor. Um, I also I also really liked uh, Tempest. Yes. Uh, Lane Davies with his dry English wit. Um, he was a lot of fun. Welcome. Uh, so those are great. Those are great, two of my favorites, without a doubt. Uh, my inspirations for the two episodes that I wrote, one of them, the Christmas story was, was a couple different things. One of them, uh, it's called Season's Greetings, G-R-E-E-D, um, you know, because there was always, there's always, there always is some sort of Cabbage Patch doll or some strange Barney dinosaur or something like that that's always the rage for young kids at Christmas time. Red Rider, BB Gun, whatever it happens to be. And uh, so we created the Atomic Space Rat, which was the most ridiculous thing we could come up with. And uh, so we were you know, capitalizing on that. But I, I love Christmas, as evidenced by the 900 Christmas movies that I make. And I'm going to continue to make, by the way. They keep, I'll make them until they throw me out. Um, just made another one, by the way. <laughs> and uh, I, I enjoy them very, very much. Um, and so Christmas time... And the ridiculousness of of uh, of that one particular gift that was a uh, that was the idea behind that. And then we brought in the toy man. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, we, we liberally stole from the toy man um, and Sherman Helmsley, and, and and he played that Isabel Sanford. It was pretty great to have the Jeffersons on and doing their thing. So that was a lot of fun. And then the other uh, the other show, uh, virtually destroyed. I wanted Lois and Clark to, you know, end up in the in the sack. Let me check check the ages here. Okay, uh, and so there was a way I could do that without having it be real, and so I thought that was kind of fun. It was an idea based on a story my friend came up with, and uh, so we wrote that. We pitched it, and they said okay. We pitched it. It was a pretty stunt heavy show, and I really enjoyed that. I always try to get big B stories in for the other actors, partially so I could have time off, also because those guys were fantastic actors and they deserved to have some of their stories told but we never really got to, to shoot that and it always seemed that we were heavy on the Lois and Clark uh, stories which you know the show was called Lois and Clark so yeah. How long did it take you to write the episodes? Uh, 15 minutes. <laughs> it took me exactly 15 minutes. No it took uh, there's a pr the process was you go and you pitch it to the, the execs and then they will let you know what if, if they say yes they're going to want to change some things. And then so uh, the whole process probably took about a month if you're really diligently working at it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they make a lot of changes and, and make you change a lot of things. And, um, but, you know, I was on set constantly. So every time I was down, I would sit in the trailer and write as opposed to go cause trouble mm -hmm. or go beat up on Clooney on the basketball court. <laughs> yes, I did that too. <laughs> Anyone else? That's it? Okay, thank you guys. Can I? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm wondering, um, are you still in contact with anyone from the show? I don't talk to anybody from the show because I despise them all. No, um, <laughs> I, uh, I am. Um, not, not in everyday contact, but pretty much in contact with them all. I follow Kate Callan on Twitter. Uh, she doesn't say that much all the time. Or I don't pay attention. Maybe I just kind of glance through quickly. Uh, but I have no reason not to. It's just that uh, um, you know, you, you, time and space and work and children and things like that. Yeah. So uh, I'm not out of touch, but I'm not... Every day in touch with everybody. 
uh, but I have, you know, if I see them, it's wonderful. I've seen John Shea at a couple of Comic Cons, and it's always wonderful. We did a panel together, it was a lot of fun. Um, it's interesting to see how he recalled things and how I recalled them. They were different. <laughs> I guess that happens. Uh, but yeah, so I'm still friends with everybody and, and have uh, nothing but, but uh, good feelings toward them all, if I see them. Who was your favorite co star? My favorite co-star. Well, we had great guest stars come on, um, and we'll probably think, <clears throat> I've told this story before, but I, I'll tell it every time, um, just because it seems so real, or so so surreal rather, to me. Uh, it was when Raquel Welsh came on the show, and then I got to kiss her, <laughs> and I called my dad. <clears throat> and I was like, Dad, uh, guess what I did today? He's like, ah, I don't know, he flew around or something. <laughs> and I said, No, I kissed Raquel Welsh, and he was actually quiet. It actually stumped for me. He was like. And then I heard him laughing, and I knew that when he was laughing, when my dad gets very emotional or something's really funny, his nostrils flare out as he does stuff, and I could hear his nostrils flaring. I could tell they were flaring, and he was that just a, the irony of me putting my lips on Raquel Welch. Who knows what his thoughts he had had about her in the past. So here's my childhood. And then I, the ironic thing about that is, now I'm on a show called Hit the Floor, I play a professional basketball coach, and there are 14 dancers on the team. And um, my son, my 14-year-old, loves to come to set all of a sudden. And I figured it out. Oh, what a shocker. He wants to hang out with the girls. And then I thought, that's so cute. But then I look around, and he's like six, seven inches taller than all of them. And he sits with them, and he looked like a different guy when I looked over. Then I realized, you know, he is much closer in age to them than I am. So I'm going to bar him from this end. So he's out. That's going to be but that's that moment, and pretty soon I guess I'll have the nostril flaring moment where I laugh when he says, I kiss, I don't know, give me a good name, somebody, anybody who's young. Not Miley Cyrus, somebody who's like younger, <laughs> Ariana Grande or something like that. You know, I don't know, who's, uh, who's that? Jennifer Lawrence, no, she's closer to my, she's my age, okay? Shh, yes she is. I should be kissing her, not him. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have no gray hair, but I'll get him soon. Uh, you know what? And by the way, I have no gray hair. <laughs> I have it in my beard. Yeah. Thanks, Ruth, for that. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's why I want you to keep it. I appreciate it. And I'm also not wearing underwear. Just tell him. Tell him right now. I'm kidding. I am wearing underwear. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> I got thrown there. I, oh, does he want to be an actor? Oh, no wonder it threw me. If you'd asked me this question six months ago, my answer would have been probably not. And now I would say probably yes. It's hard to say. You know, he hasn't really undertaken what it is to be an actor. He sees the fun stuff. He sees the beautiful girls and the dancing and, you know, that sort of stuff. But he doesn't understand how, what the, the craft of, of playing characters is and, and really happy to, to delve into a, a character. And, um, but he's a pretty sensitive guy. So if he decides it's something he wants to do and he's able to to sort of harness that, and, and a lot of actors are really kind of screwed up, to be honest, uh, especially the ones that I know who are really fantastic. They're more comfortable playing a character than they are being themselves. I'm not that way, uh, so it's more work for me to get into a character, uh, because I like myself, and I like being me. So some of these people I know, I see them go and they jump into these characters, I'm like, wow, that's amazing, but you really don't like yourself, so it's, a, it's, a not, it's an easy departure. And I think he likes himself, so I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. If he wants to do it, he'll have my support. He'll certainly have a way in. He was in a movie this uh, this summer, or I guess this summer, just, just about a month ago. I exec produced it, so nepotism is alive, and it is well. Uh, but he had one little line. He had to say, yeah, like your mom. That was, his, that was his whole line, and he said it well. I wasn't even there the day he did it, but he liked it. So... Um, we'll see if that gives him the bug or not, but I think he likes the attention that comes with it, which is a double-edged sword, as I will explain to him over and over and over again. But if he wants to do it, I'll encourage it. Yeah, I just want him to be happy. I don't care what he does. I don't care if he's a shoe salesman or a driver or a gardener. I don't care, as long as he's a happy guy and does a good job. Yes? Did I like filming Ripley's Believe It or Not? Like is too weak a word. <laughs> I loved shooting that show. It was, uh, I produced it as well, so my company made the show. 
Um, it was a lot of fun. I do, I'm constantly uh, amazed and surprised by the ridiculousness of people. Uh, Robert Ripley himself was always, he liked the, the strange and the unusual. And I think we all look at it and go like, wow, that's something. Um, kids loved the show. I loved doing it. It didn't take up a whole lot of my time either, so it was a great side gig. But probably the most lucrative job I ever had. I have visited a number of them. Would I visit this one? Sure, I would. I haven't here. I don't think I have. There's two here. <laughs> there you go. Well, apparently, I probably haven't then. Uh, but I would in a heartbeat. Uh, I'd probably see half the stuff that I recognized um, because I did see a lot of Ripley stuff over four years. So we did about we had about nine segments per show. We did uh, 88 shows. So there's at least 200 things. How's that for math, right? I'm kidding. There's more than that, obviously. But, but uh, um, yeah, I saw an awful lot of interesting stuff. Did freak you out over there? A lot of things freaked me out about that. You know, holding a person's head in your, head, in your hand. Like this guy, I remember his name was Peter something. He was a German guy. He was a murderer. And they wanted to, just, they wanted to open his head up and study his brain, see if it was a different size or whatever. And I opened up his head because they preserved it. And they found that the brain was the same size. So... That didn't, that didn't work. Uh, but you know the, the things that I really liked were the historical things. Like when, when John Wilkes Booth assassinated uh, President Lincoln, he did so with a derringer and shot him in the back of the head. Um, and then he jumped off of the balcony and landed on the stage and his spare derringer fell out of his coat. And I held that in my hand. And to have that derringer and it says John Wilkes Booth on it, it's just pretty amazing. Or J.W. Booth or whatever it said. I was like, uh, yep, it's his. And they get everything authentic, you know, authenticated. So it's pretty amazing to see that. That sort of stuff always got a little rise at me. That's for sure. Yes, sir. When you come in for a guest role, all right, how much input do you get to have in the character? Do you get any? I mean, with, with your experience. Yeah, experience plays a big part of it. <clears throat> when you do an episodic television, and it depends on which particular show it is, sometimes they'll have a, a group of three or four directors that do all of the shows. Uh, sometimes they'll bring in all different directors. And if it's an all different bunch of group, you know, the, of directors, sometimes they'll really be on you about your character and really want to direct you the way to go, in a sense. And sometimes it's very collaborative. Um, more often than not, though, I have a, a lot of say-so over the, over the character. Because you're coming in with a reputation, with a body of work, and they say, you know, you hired me to play this, and so here's my choices. And if it's, a, it's a collaborative medium, so you don't want to bang heads. Um, listen to each other, and whoever has the best argument usually wins. So I've had a lot of say over the, the characters that I played. I really enjoyed doing the, the character in Criminal Minds, because in Criminal Minds, the guest characters do most of the work on the show. That's why I want to play one of the agents all the time, because those guys, like I said, they clean it up in two days. Um, they sit there and talk about it. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And then they show up, and they solve the crime, and it's over. The, the, the bad guy has to do all those stuff. Yeah. Well, what you brought to the division. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of input now, I'm sure. The division I did, they had an idea for the character. Deborah Joy Levine, who created Lois and Clark, also created the division. And she was great. And she said, you know, I'd love to see you do this. And would you do it? And blah, blah, blah. And I said, sure. And it was a lot of fun. You know, him being a former alcoholic. Or, and he was a recovering alcoholic. And she was an addict. So it was a, t it was a, it was a fun... It was a departure for me. It was a growing of sense. Uh, now it's a lot easier to do because I've done so many other things. But then it was a it was a big stretch and it was a, it was a, a good challenge. But yeah, Deborah Joy let me have quite a bit to say about about the character. That was fun. I like that one. Yeah. Yes. Like <laughs> 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 Happens. Did you enjoy your role in God is Not Dead? God's Not Dead. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> what a surprise hit that movie has turned out to be. Um, if you're not familiar with it, God's Not Dead is a small, little small film that that uh, didn't couple years ago. It took a while for it to come out. And it came out uh, two, three months ago. And it made over 60 million domestically in, in the U.S. Uh, and I believe it's coming to Canada soon. It's going to go out on DVD. It's a, about to get a bigger release. It's a little film <clears throat> that deals with, um, there's a few parallel stories and they all sort of intersect at the end. It's about a kid who goes to a college and he takes a, I guess it's a philosophy class. And uh, Kevin Sorbo plays the philosophy professor, and he says to the kid, you know, or to the entire class, just before we even start, let's just write, let's just jump to the conclusion that we're gonna, that every sophomore knows is that God is not, de God is dead. If you write that down, we can just skip to the next part, and every kid in the class does it except for one who says, I'm a Christian, I can't do that. Doesn't then you're gonna have to 
argue the opposite side. And then there's all these different stories taking place. My character is a very, very wealthy guy and uh, who doesn't believe at all. And, um, the whole story, it all comes together, but it's really well told, and it it has really taken off, and it's completely shocked me. So uh, I'm very happy at its success. You never know. I mean, if they spend a million dollars on that movie, I'm six foot ten, and I'm not six foot ten. Uh, they could have spent much more than that. Apparently, they said two two million or something, but I I, I have trouble even seeing that. It's just that the film, the story caught on, and uh, a lot of the church groups got together and watched it, and word spread and. Uh, I'm as shocked as anybody, and I'm a little angry with myself for not taking back end points. Darn it. What would have been Mark's reaction at the end of the movie when uh, the mother speaks? Yeah, well, say that again? Can you start the first part? So when Mark's character at the end, when the mother speaks, it's as if you were going to say something, but then it stopped. What would you have said to her? Hmm. That's a really good question. Let me consult my script. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I mean, I think that was a shocking moment for him. She had that clairvoyant moment where suddenly she was there and, and very cognizant of everything and said something so profound. Um, you know, whether he was going to say something or not, I, sometimes you open your mouth to speak and nothing's going to come out because you have no, nothing to say to it. I don't think he had any real retort for it. Um, uh, but, I, but I couldn't tell you. I'd have to make it up and that would be untrue. And then someone would get mad at me. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of preparation do you play for a character like that? Because he was such a complete ass. Like, yes. <laughs> ass would be a very good way to describe him, sir. Uh, you know, I when you're acting, you'll find a lot of actors, they always talk about it, they like to observe people. And you're observing family members, friends, people on the street, and coffee shops, all the time. And certain behaviors will resonate with you. Uh, I know a lot of people who are, are like him. Uh, I know some very fabulously wealthy people, and very successful people, and um, you steal from them, in a sense, and that, that's what I did. So I stole from some people like that, and th you, we all have certain sides to our personality as well. So you can borrow from yourself and together sort of meld that in together. And then in collaboration with your director, who's like, okay, look, let's not, let's not go that far, or let's go further, or this, and so you, you really start to, to mold it together. Um, but it's a far departure from who I am, personally. Uh, but you know you can play different characters because uh, maybe it's a facet to your personality and that can come out and everybody has that bit of ego that that, that character had for sure um, and whether it's self-confidence or if it's uh, insecurity it may come off one way or the other but um, you know it's a combination of borrowing from from people you've seen parts of your own life and, and certainly the direction that the director takes you you were great as <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't everybody's favorite character in the film, that's for sure. But uh, that's part of what makes it good, you know, you, to be able to, to play both sides. We were also wondering, when the car hit Kevin Sorbo, that wasn't you, like, that wasn't your character in that car, was it? Well, you know, Kevin Sorbo and I were down at the very end for, for Lois and Clark. So the first time I hit him with a car was when we were, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no um, I think they leave that out uh, to everyone's imagination. It's one of those things where they purposely don't give you the answer. I don't know that he was intended to be the driver, but uh, it's one of those things that um, my dad's a director, and uh, he'll do things in his films, and he'll sit in and have an open question and answer session and find out things about his film that he didn't know. Uh, and that may be one of those things. Um, and, and again, it's open to interpretation. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. You know, people are like, I thought that was amazing when you did that. And he goes, oh, yeah, I guess you can see it that way. Perfect. <laughs> yes, sir. Talking with your dad as a director and talking with your son made me think your son getting possibly into acting. Uh, if he gets into it, I would I'd rather he be a director than an actor, my son, because you have a lot more power in a sense. But uh, he, may very well, he may very well be an actor. The Stone Boy. See, uh, yeah. So I hadn't thought about anything. I wasn't even really aware that it was a real profession, which I think is completely healthy. Um, uh, Sean Penn was the first kid that I. I grew up with the Penn family. Um, our parents were closest friends, and um, and the Sheens and the Estevez family. And so um, when my dad directed Young Guns, all those guys were kids that he that I had grown up with. 
Uh, but Sean was the first person that I heard that was going to be an actor. I thought, that's the strangest thing. I was in high school, I was playing football and doing stuff, and they're like, yeah, you know, Sean's acting. I was like, what? That's a real job? You know, I didn't understand that. Uh, and then Rob Lowe started acting, and that was getting out of, Rob's going to be an actor, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Didn't think about it, and then uh, I knew my dad was a director, obviously, and he was doing a film, and I hadn't thought about acting in the stone but they couldn't, they hadn't cast the older brother. And they'd cast a kid, Jason, and apparently I looked like him. And they said, well, why doesn't Dean play it? My dad was terrified. He's like, uh, because he can't act. And uh, so we'll bring him in, and I went inside, and uh, I had to read for it. And I didn't know much about the business, and I didn't care, but he was with his producing partner at the time, was a guy named Joe Roth, who was, has done a gajillion film since, and he ran studios and things. And there was an actor named Robert Duvall. Uh, and these are the guys I have to go audition for. And I don't know. I'm like, okay. Da, 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 da. And then I come and, and uh, we start doing the first scene. And my dad, of course, is in the room. And they treated me like everybody else. Okay, so we start reading the scene. And I start reading my lines. And my dad gets up and walks out. I was like, oh, okay, that's really making me feel good. And then we did some improv stuff. And then Robert Duvall said, yeah, he can do it. Um, so that's why I started acting. Uh, not because... It was something I wanted to do at the time or even thought about doing. Then I went to college, and when I was in college and I would go sp spend some time, I went to Princeton in New Jersey, and a lot of my friends um, would spend their summer internships in the city and, and doing um, investment banking, things of those nature, that nature, and I saw what they did in the summertime, and then I saw what my dad did for a living, and I was like, wait a minute, which is more fun? And I certainly started thinking about the film industry then. Um, and Christopher, my son, I think he sees that right off the, right the get-go. So he's already saying, eh, maybe I'll be an actor. Of course, this is after he, he was going to be an engineer and design body armor for the military and cars. And uh, so he's changed a couple times. I assume he'll change a few more times um, in the near future. But we'll see. Two more? Okay. That went quick, huh? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as far as, uh, oh, I thought you meant today. I thought we were. Uh, so I thought we'd go out to dinner, we'd hang out. Um, the, um, you know what? I don't know. I just finished so many things. Um, there's, I would like to hit the floor to, to last for several seasons. So we're, we've, we've, hi, hello. We've got one, two episodes of Aired Down. Um, I'd love to see us get picked up for third season, fourth season. I really enjoy playing this, this character. Um, so I would like to see that show continue. Uh, in the interim, um, it, it'll be interesting. I, I'd probably, I'll probably make one or two films. I'm certainly going to produce another Christmas, <clears throat> excuse me, Christmas film. We're sort of developing a couple of different properties that I'll be producing as well. Now, and I, I, I like producing it. I like to be the boss, uh, and so I'll be doing a couple things like that. But I, I'm not sure. There's a couple of films. See, the thing about doing a film, and I like doing the films, but like, there's a film right now we're considering, and, but I have to go to Hungary for six weeks, which is fine. But I gotta bring my son, that's, I'm like, guess what your summer's gonna be? Hungary! I'm like, what? <laughs> um, so, so, those are the things I have to balance all the time, and I've been balancing that for the last 15 years. So we're just gonna have to see how it works out. Um, so what I would like to do next is go home and sleep. That's the first, that's the first thing. Yes, sir, I'm sorry, I'm, we'll, we'll get it. Christmas, my favorite part about doing Christmas movies, Christmas is my favorite time of the year, and it's not always the most stable or calm, because the family gets together and then madness happens. And it happens, you get angry, or my dad and I had one of our worst arguments ever over Christmas time one year. And it was because I decided, with my brother-in-law, to do underwear-clad snow angels. <laughs> we thought it was a good idea, and then we of course came back in the house, and we were a bit full of snow, and my dad didn't like that and took exception. So we got into a big argument about that one. But that's when that's the kind of stuff that, for me, all that emotion, families on top of each other, the years, things coming together, I, I just think it's such a wonderful time. Outside of any reason that Christmas exists or Hanukkah or any particular religious uh, connection, it's just a wonderful time. And one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And wasn't that a great movie? Uh, and, and, and that sort of sentiment Sometimes we get going so fast, we forget. Uh, and Christmas is always a time to, to, to bring that back. That's, so I guess those are the reasons. Yes, sir? Um, just in regards to the entertainment industry, I gotta be honest, like, I was eight years old and 
you were a big role model for me. So, when, uh, you, when you were eight years old, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that, that I was a little mad at you. Yes, which is good, which is good. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but I'm going, I'm going into the entertainment industry to be an actor, and uh, I appreciate the character of Clark because I really feel like it still lasts up until now, and it still stands out as a positive character and a role model for kids. So I was just wondering, how important do you think it is um, for actors like yourself, or just the <coughs> industry in general, to, to be a good role model and not just a big you know, that's a great question um, about being role, mo role models versus being a celebrity or being, you know, as Charles Barkley famously once said, I'm, I'm a professional basketball player, I'm not your role model, your parents should be. And I agree with him, they should be. And some people want to take that mantle on, some people don't. I'm very happy to. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. I'm glad Twitter and Facebook weren't around in my late high school, early college days. Um, but that's when you're supposed to make those stupid mistakes. It's like the Justin Bieber stupid thing when he was 14. That stuff, I mean, that stuff just is ridiculous. So we all do stupid things at some point in time there. But when you're, then you start playing a character. I knew when I started playing a character like Superman, Clark Kent, that there was some certainly some responsibility to it. But I always sort of, as an athlete, I always sort of felt that extra pressure and I knew you were some sort of a role model whether you wanted to be or not. And I embraced that. So for me, it was great. Uh, I don't want to put it on anybody else that they should be or shouldn't be. You know, um, it's really, I think, completely subjective, but uh, there are individual, I think, of individuals who will covet that and say, okay, great, and embrace it, and uh, I'm happy to. Um, again, with the full caveat that not nobody's perfect, we're all gonna make mistakes, but it's the same way I've tried to be a father as well. You know, I try to be the most exemplary father I can. Not so much, for, certainly not for anybody else, but for my own son to see and for him to know, and because my father was that way. Are you in trouble? Was it? You had one last question. I'm sorry. Just for you being an actor and also um, supporting the troops, I know. How do you feel with these actors when you're making comments comparing their jobs to your dad? Uh, actors and compare that. Gwyneth Paltrow in particular uh, and Tom Cruise also made that. Not that I'm paying attention. Um, no, look, um, it's tough when you're in the public eye too. I'm gonna, so there's something to their defense is, you know, you say a lot of things and things can be misconstrued. I had a conversation this morning on the morning show here where we were discussing gun control and there's a horrible situation that took place in Moncton here and I'm aware of that. Um, in the States, I'm a big Second Amendment guy and I, I'm a gun owner. And, at the same time, I think it's an incredible tragedy. I mean, it's just absolutely horrible. Um, but you can say things that can really anger people and get them upset. Um, I spent a lot of time with military, U.S., Canadian forces. I've been, I've seen everybody in theater, outside of uh, situations. That, um, I just am a great supporter of law enforcement. Uh, the RCMP guys who, who lost their lives, God bless them. I mean, they're. Uh, it's just tragic. So much respect for them. Um, and I really appreciate what they do, and I think very often we don't appreciate it, that, that, but when you need them, boy, do you appreciate them. And uh, when they're out there searching for that kid, they're out there searching, and they know this guy's arm has already killed three people. It, it's a scary moment. It's a very difficult thing to do, but you need those people there. Um, so when, when actors start saying things, oh, it's like war, or it's like this, or like that, I try to cut them a little bit of a break. Uh, they're completely wrong. There's nothing like war. It's the most disgusting, horrible thing. And anybody who's been there will tell you. Um, and certainly nothing that we do is, <laughs> is it even remotely like that. Uh, the, just unfortunate analogies that they make and their poor word choice. Um, I, I try to cut them a little bit of slack, but they're, but they're, they're far, far, far off base. There, there's, no, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. It's, acting's a good job if you can get it. Sure, you're under some scrutiny and some, some issues, but at the same time, you can shake that off. That's, that's a rich person's problem. Well, I thank you all for sticking with me for this hour and a half that we've been here. Appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see you all out there. Cheers. You're not the gentleman who was in third or, third or fourth grade who tweeted something, are you? You kind of look like this guy who tweeted something and I said something back to. All right. I was going to kick your ass. No, no, he said something really... <laughs> no, don't kid. Don't, do don't call my bluff. No, it was that kid who said something about being... In, in fourth grade, he said, I think third grade was very tough for me, but then I was like, third grade? Uh, but it was a very sweet comment, and then, and, uh, and of course, the person was growing up. It's like you saying you were eight years old, and I was trying to do the math. Eight years old, is that third grade? Third grade when I started watching the show. There we go. That hurts, too. Uh, thank you all. I'll see you all out there. Enjoy the weekend.